What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2019 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack Widebody. Huge thanks to Dodge for providing us with this very sweet Scat Pack Widebody to review for you guys today. So about the all new widebody version of the Scat Pack. Well, of course it's trickling down from last year's Hellcat Red Eye and now is available here on the Scat Pack. But there's a lot of unique tuning that goes into the widebody uh, beyond just the exterior changes and the tire and wheel changes. And I'll get to all those details later on in the video. But I gotta say, as far as exterior uh, looks go, it looks so good. I love the way they've integrated uh, the widebody here. It's always looked good, you know, in last year's Hellcat and I talked about that last year. Um, but I just, it just looks so good here on the scat pack as well i still love how you have the nice large rt badge and the retro challenger script there um, in the grill i also love the hood you get here with the scat packs although i do uh, miss the shaker hood that's still available but not here with the wide body package unfortunately um, but uh, this is still a really sweet hood it actually has trickled down from the hellcat of last year and so now you get that more aggressive hood here on the scat pack too which is very cool um, coming down to the sides like i said you got three or five wide tires and these uh, very wide wheels look nice and meaty with the Brembo brakes hiding behind them. You have a cool Scat Pack badge here, 392 on the fender, and uh, always great to see that little bumblebee there. And uh, the side profile of the Challenger, I still just admire it so much. Uh, you know, the fundamental design of the Challenger here is uh, nearly 10 years old at this point, but uh, it doesn't matter. It looks so good, and the wide body just accentuates that even more. And I love the side profile on these. I love the little retro side mirrors and just the fuel filler door there. Everything is just so cool. I love those retro cues. Going out back, you have those very cool tail lamps that were restyled a few years ago and still look phenomenal. I think it's, again, just very futuristic uh, take on a retro design and uh, it's just brilliant the way they executed that. And you can see those uh, meaty 305s out back there that give it a more aggressive stance from the rear as well. And so overall, I think it's just a fantastic looking vehicle. Right, so for the interior of the Scat Pack Wide Body Challenger here, well, that's a really cool place to be and I've covered Challenger interiors several times so I'm going to be a little more brief here, but I'll hit all the main stuff still. So first off, sitting down in these seats, really love the red Alcantara-like uh, suede material you have here on these seats, and especially combined with the Destroyer gray exterior, uh, these red uh, seats look really cool to me. I love, of course, the little embroidered Scat Pack B there as well. Anyway, though, they're a really nice shape for the seats. Great for the street. Uh, might not have the most amazing bolstering, you know, if you're going track driving, but I actually still really like these seats. You know, they're larger seats. Uh, definitely a little bit uh, wider, you know, so they can accommodate uh, larger body types uh, very easily, uh, but still has great bolstering. I mean, you have these huge uh, torso bolsters, and you also have nice uh, high uh, bolstering here for the thighs as well. And so overall, they really hug you in place well here. Next, though, is the steering wheel here in the Scat Pack Wide Body, which is the same great Challenger wheel that most of the other ones have. This one has the Dodge emblem instead of SRT. Since this is not like a full-blown SRT product, it's right beneath that. Uh, but it still has an awesome 9 and 3 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches. Um, doesn't have the same type of trim here for like a semi-flat bottom like you see on some other SRT wheels. Just a nice round wheel, but still just fantastic. It even has uh, little uh, notches here beneath the 9 and 3 as well, which is kind of cool, like the 8 and 4. Um, and so it just looks really great. You have a few buttons here on the front of it. Very simple, you know, they, the FCA, they always put the uh, volume and tune uh, rockers here on the back of the steering wheel to change that without having to uh, take your hands off the steering wheel which is a nice little feature there and is really handy once you get used to it um so overall a great steering wheel next to the gauges here and the challenger which i still adore Adore these gauges. It's so cool because you know all the other manufacturers have abandoned retro looking gauges as far as uh, the muscle car competitors go and I like that Dodge has stuck with that and still has it uh, very nicely modernized. You know of course uh, you have uh, the gauges there on the left and the right look very sporty and retro but in the middle there you have a nice large digital portion it gives you tons of information uh, right up there with what all the others do and maybe even a little bit more so as far as you know any kind of vehicle parameter you want to look up it'll have all that stuff there laid out nicely and you can also go into performance pages and then you have all kinds of you can measure anything you want from braking distance 0 to 60 a quarter mile all that type of stuff is uh, nicely integrated into there as well and so it's a nice large screen very high res resolution great display and they've used it for several years now and I think it looks really great in combination with these retro gauges 
Come over to some of the dashboard here. You have the great 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen right up top, which is so responsive, one of the best out there. It's not as fancy or feature packed as maybe some of the others, but I mean, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Everything's a quick touch away, and you can even customize this lower row of buttons here, similar like what you see on you know a smartphone or something. So you can have whatever shortcuts you want. Um, and there's just, it's so easy to navigate. You still have a volume and tune knob. And so that makes it very easy for tuning radio stations. They really just got all the fundamentals right. And while others are trying to be fancy and do other different things, this sticks to the basics of what everyone wants. And so I think it is a 10 out of 10 as far as infotainment goes. So quick and snappy. The only thing, you know, you still have the performance pages, which does take, you know, it seems like a full like 20 seconds or so before um, that does come on. But there's a lot of info there. And so not a huge deal. Coming down, like I said, you have the volume and tune knob and your fan speed knob there. There's just a few buttons and that's it. And so very simple and a nice Nicely laid out here and uh, I also love this little console the way it right, kind of wraps around the driver and you also see the manual shifter here which uh, really feels great it's a perfect positioning and um, yeah I just really like uh, the crookedness of it a little bit of a retro thing and nice leather shift ball and really great there moving on to storage space here in the Challenger it's pretty good uh, about equal with uh, most of the other competitors out there you know so in the door here you have a bottle holder and also another little pocket towards the back that you can only access when the door is open um, so not the most handy but still great to have a bottle holder because uh, that's something that, like the Mustang for example does not have um, but then coming over to the center you don't have any kind of thing forward of the shifter like you do in uh, the Mustang um, but then you do have two cup holders, here, cup holders here behind the shifter which is great to see and um, if you do have a larger a drink here in the driver's side cup holder it will get in the way of the shifter a little bit that's one thing I've noticed this is the first time I've reviewed a manual challenger and so that is one thing that I've noticed so you're gonna want to you know keep a drink here on the passenger side cup holder if it's only one drink otherwise you kind of got to move your arm around that a little bit so not ideal placement for the cup holders but honestly not a huge deal and again most of these vehicles are equipped with the auto so it's a non-issue Coming back, you have the center armrest, which is really nice and softly padded. Feels great. I love the red stitching you have here as well to go along with the red interior. And anyway, you open that up, and you have a nice deep cubby here. It also has a USB jack, two USB jacks, in fact, an auxiliary jack and a power outlet in there, and plenty of space to fit all kinds of stuff. And so that really makes up for the fact that you don't have anything out in the open here as far as storage space goes. You know, stuff like the Camaro has a much more shallow and nearly unusable center armrest. And so for this one to have something nice and deep here is really great and so overall it makes it you know very easy to live with as far as storage space goes backseat space in the challenger is really great i'm five foot nine me sitting behind myself i actually can fit comfortably which is something i can't say about its two competitors and so you know i have just maybe a couple millimeters of legroom to spare there it is tight but being five foot nine to be able to sit back there completely comfortably uh, and i actually did on this uh, real little, little road to sema that we did here this year uh, i did sit in the back seat of the hellcat red eye for an hour or two and was totally comfortable so really a great usable backseat you even have air vents there and a full down center armrest with two cup holders. Trunk space in the Challenger is also excellent. Again, a nice, deep, wide, and long space. And uh, also, when you open up uh, the little under tray in the floor there, you'll see it's pretty deep and all kinds of uh, room there as well. And so overall, just an excellent amount of storage space in the trunk too. All right, so start, I'm going to go for a drive. Uh, the Scat Pack wide body here is the standard Dodge key. Nothing special, honestly. It's uh, been around for quite a few years now. It's just a plastic key. It does have a little bit of metal here on the bottom, which is appreciated. And still just a fine key, but you know, nothing outstanding but of course it's keyless access keyless entry and push button start which is great so you just leave the key in your pocket put the clutch in hit the end of the start button and it roars to life all right so setting off in the 2019 dodge challenger scat pack wide body so uh first thing you notice well i think the first thing that i notice uh, here obviously is the clutch pedal uh, since this is my first time actually reviewing a manual challenger and uh, i've driven them in the past a few times so i'm not uh, totally unfamiliar with it or anything but um, it's definitely a heavier clutch pedal but it's very easy to drive actually i think you know obviously it's a little bit of a leg workout if you're not used to it but other than that it's very clear with its engagement point and very easy to learn i think you know if you're uh, not 
not super familiar with a manual or something, I think this one's very um, you know, easy to figure out. Whereas some of the other ones, like the Mustang, it's a little tricky. Uh, this is very easy, I think, for beginners. And it's a really great shifter, too. Just very notchy, pretty precise feeling, and just feels really nice to use. Although you don't have the cool stuff like the auto rev match downshifts that you get in uh, some of the competitors. Uh, but uh, not a huge deal. I think most people are fine doing it themselves. Uh, other things here to note, um, you know, you have nice throttle and brake response here. So uh, throttle, especially that's one of the things that, you know, is uh, not customizable in the drive modes here, uh, but it still is just really nicely dialed in. You have a little bit of dead travel in typical, I guess, muscle car fashion. You know, it's not super razor sharp like you see in some Japanese stuff and German stuff. Um, but it certainly fits with this vehicle and still feels great. You just have to be a little more deliberate with your throttle uh, inputs. Uh, brakes also feel phenomenal since you have the Hellcat brakes, which I'll mention more about in a second here. Um, but you have nice progressive pedal travel, but it really starts biting as soon as you lean into the brake, but it's not uh, super resistive to uh, to your push. So it's very, uh, very sensitive and feels great. Um, another thing, steering is one of the things you can customize in the drive mode to make it heavier or lighter depending on your preference. Um, and feels pretty good. So the wide bodies here, I uh, switch over to electric power steering versus, uh, you know, the hydraulic that they used in previous years. But it's still, I honestly can't really notice a difference. Maybe if you're really hammering on it or something. Visibility in the Challenger is mostly good. So it depends on what hood you have, you know, as far as how much hood you have to look out over. Uh, but, you know, with this one, I just you have a little bit of a bump there in the middle. But otherwise, a very good view forward, actually. You don't have any type of big, long hood to look out over like you do in some of the competitors as well. Very easy to see out of the sides too with nice large side windows that uh, makes it a little more livable uh, than especially the Camaro with its uh, tank like visibility this is much much better view out of the back is also quite good the only caveat though is the c-pillar is pretty chunky here in the challengers and so if you're getting you know trying to back out of somewhere or looking at some intersection and you just happen to be having to look in that direction in stuff like the Mustang it's a little easier to see because that quarter window in the back is a little bit larger this one it's pretty small and and you have a pretty chunky C pillar, which isn't great. Uh, so that can be a little bit of a bummer, but you know, you do have a backup camera and again, not the end of the world, but just something to note for a daily livability standpoint. But I mean, the Challengers, I think that's one of the reasons why they sell so well is they're so comfortable. They're very spacious, feels a little roomier than some of the other muscle cars because it's bigger obviously than some of the other muscle cars out there. And so, uh, you know, it just makes it a very great thing to commute in. Like I said, you have great uh, back seat space and uh, areas to put things very easy to see out of and so all those things I think contribute to make this a very easy vehicle to drive and live with. Another thing I really like about the Challenger is uh, the exhaust volume. You know, they really got it right from the get-go here on these um, more recent Challengers. They don't rely on any kind of active exhaust like some of the others do as an option. This just from the factory sounds really good. You know even putting along at 1700 rpms here just a nice mechanical burbly V8 sound uh, I think just about anyone can enjoy. Alright, so let's turn down onto this straight road here and see how it does. We got in sport mode and here we go. I think they're 15.4 inch rotors uh, and six piston uh, Brembo brakes there. But anyway, the power here in the uh, Scat Pack. So it has the 392 Hemi 6.4 liter V8 naturally aspirated. It does 485 horsepower, 475 pound feet of torque. And uh, that that extra torque is really appreciated because when you compare it to stuff like my Bullet, for example, which only has five less horsepower, but this feels a lot more punchy at the lower RPMs because you have that extra torque. You know, like my Bullet, for example, only has 420 pound feet versus 475 in this, that extra 55 pound feet. You really feel, especially, and you appreciate it more in the manual because with the automatic, you know, it's eight speeds, so they're closer in their spacing, and it's just really eager to just downshift and just, you know, throw you in the back of your seat and take off. Whereas with this, you know, you're you're in the gear, obviously, in a manual, and so the engine just has to work it out and, uh, you know, slowly build up that speed. But it still is very quick. Zero to 60, as uh, estimated by Dodge, at four 
and a half seconds here for the wide body version of the Scat Pack. I believe that's with the automatic manual, might slow it down a tad, um, but still, it's uh, it's fantastic. And I mean, I will say that the automatic and the Scat Pack is, I think, uh, you know, the best automatic out of all the muscle cars. You know, Dodge does it so well with the ZF8 speed. Uh, the Mustang 10 speed isn't quite as fast to respond. Uh, same goes for, uh, you know, the GM speed and 10 speed and the Camaras and stuff not not nearly as good as a ZF so if you're going for an automatic muscle car Challenger I think has the best one as far as manual shifting and auto shifting uh, but this manual is fantastic too I know some people get a little weirded out by the crooked shifter but I like it it's an old school thing that's what they had back then as well and it's a really nice uh, notchy shifter as well that uh, combined with I mean it's very uh, sharp throttle response and everything here too in the scat pack so it's uh, very eager and it really feels like a driver's car I know we're in a big vehicle here although the scat pack is a decent bit lighter than the Hellcats uh, you know these weigh around like 42 32 I believe is the weight so still probably about 400 pounds heavier than an equivalent Mustang GT or Camaro SS but uh, you know that that size and stuff really doesn't bother you. You know I've been driving uh, this for about a week now. This uh, road to SEMA trip off and on. I haven't been driving it straight for a week, but I put probably a couple hundred miles on it at this point. And uh, you know I really got used to the size. It's not hard to drive or anything. Uh, very easy. I mean obviously we have some very wide roads out here. If you're in a tighter place, it might be a little trickier. And in parking and things like that, it can be a little tighter um, than what you even encounter with the other muscle cars. But like I said, it's something that I think you can definitely get used to. I don't think it's bad at all. Another little thing that I just love about the SCAD pack in particular is I really notice, you know, since you don't have any supercharger wine, of course, uh, being naturally aspirated, but you hear so much of the engine. I think a decent amount more than you usually get with other uh, muscle cars even, where, you know, the exhaust is nice and loud. You know, it's a little bit droney at times, uh, but it does sound great. Uh, but I also just love the engine noises. And it's not just like not just like the, the growling of the engine, but you hear little ticking sounds, like you hear all the little mechanical bits, you even get a tiny bit of gear whine, it's all very mechanical sounding, and that just enhances, uh, you know, the old school feeling of the Challenger here, you get all those sounds, and usually, you know, you have big thick engine covers, and everything's all nicely concealed, so that you don't hear anything, um, and I love that you actually hear the engine working, uh, and it just makes for, you know, nice little additional sounds uh, to, you know, enjoy while you're uh, also revving out this engine and hearing, of course, the Loud Voicers V8. But getting back to this engine, you'll notice whenever I did that acceleration, there really wasn't any wheel spin, even though I had it in sport mode, which turns traction control off. Uh, it still just did not even want to break loose, and that's thanks to those 305 wide tires we have all around here in the wide body version of the Scat Pack. So the Scat Pack with the wide body, any, you can add wide body onto any of the Challengers, these higher up versions at least, uh, and it's only a $6,000 upcharge. And I say only because just for the wider wheels and tires, that's uh, you know a large chunk of it, but there's actually so much more, especially that goes into the Scat Pack version of the wide body. They did more than just give it the wider fenders and the wider wheels and tires, and of course the bigger brakes, which I already mentioned. It also has a unique suspension setup, and that's something that even the wide body version of the Hellcat uh, and Hellcat Red Eye, they don't get unique suspension setups. This does though, and so I think they really went the extra mile here with the Scat Pack version of the wide body. Um, and so, for example, it has uh, the same springs as the Hellcat in the rear, but in the front it has a unique spring rate that's actually uh, the stiffest uh, front spring rate of any Challenger. So uh, that, of course, is uh, partially because you have the lighter engine here versus uh, the supercharged version. Um, but it also just they really wanted to give this car a really sharp, a sharper turn in, you know, for a muscle car of this size and weight. And um, it also has uh, thicker anti-roll bars. They're two millimeters thicker in the front and then the, the one in the back is three millimeters thicker and so all that helps to help it to feel a little more buttoned down and give you a lot of confidence and I was fortunate enough uh, on this road to seem that we were on to actually drive Angela's Crest and Angela's Forest in this vehicle and um, it is impressive I mean yes it's heavy yes it's large but it does such a good job for what it is. And I am so tired of everyone complaining about Challenger handling because it is so much better than everyone gives it credit for. If you take one of these, especially a wide body version, around a track, like I was
was actually able to take this around a track when I went to the Hellcat Red Eye launch. Um, and on track, it's phenomenal. It, it's so much sharper than even the Hellcat Red Eye, uh, you know, because you have less power, so you can be more abusive with the throttle and not have to worry quite as much. But it just, it has so much grip. It's, you know, very similar to like a 1LE version of a Camaro SS uh, or like a Grand Sport version of a Corvette where you don't have the bigger engine, but you have all the grip and all the tire uh, that you could want. And so it really helps us to, to feel a lot sportier and a lot more athletic. And it's just, like I said, it has grips for days. You, I mean, usually if you can watch my previous Scat Pack uh, Challenger review, that, I mean, will spin galore. That was also the automatic, but I mean, just love spinning those 275s. But with the 305s here, it really does a good job of putting that power to the ground. Another really cool thing you get is you get the adjustable suspension that you usually get in the SRT and other models, uh, and it's the Bilstein dampers, uh, which are also unique uh, in their setup for uh, the Scat Pack wide body here, and it's an adjustable three mode uh, Bilstein, and so you know you can have sports, street, or track for uh, you know the firmness of that, and um, you know it, it does make a difference because I did notice uh, you know in street, you know when you're going around, especially those tight corners and Angela's Crest and stuff, it's definitely a little softer. It's great for cruising around um, but I have it in sport mode now and you know these roads are pretty well maintained but even on rougher roads it still doesn't beat you up it's still a very smooth ride that's one of the great attributes of the Challenger here it's just I mean the ride quality it's just, they're such great cruisers so nice I mean for like I said we drove from LA all the way to Vegas uh, and took the long way uh, through Black Bear Lake and a bunch of other stuff for those of you that are familiar with the area and you know it's a two-day uh, drive from LA to Vegas the way we did it and I mean these things just you don't get any kind of fatigue it's just you can drive for hours and not even feel it and it's really great um, but anyway so you know but in sport mode it does handle a little bit firmer and it's a little bit you know tighter gives you a little more confidence and uh, and it's nice you can also divvy everything up individually so you can have you know the steering and the lighter normal mode the street mode if you want you don't want the heavy steering, but you can still have the suspension in sport and um, have traction and whatever else you want. And so that's really nice that you can kind of individually customize that. And not only does the Scat Pack wide body feel better in the corners, but uh, numerically it is actually better in the corners. So uh, it'll do, uh, according to Dodge, uh, the skid pad uh, goes from 0.93 G's to 0.97 G's. It'll pull around a skid pad. And they also claim that it's actually as fast as the original Hellcat with its 707 horsepower and 275 wide tires it's as fast as that around the gingerman raceway it'll do the same lap time with way less horsepower but all the extra grip and handling so uh and they're quite proud of that and i mean rightly so because i mean sure that hellcat will still pull on those straights but this thing catches a big time in the corners that really just helps uh to visualize you know, just how much quicker this is and how much better it handles than a regular challenger and so whenever you consider all that type of stuff it's also i think uh 0.2 seconds uh, faster down the quarter mile and all that stuff of course thanks to the wider tires give you better grip um all that combines to give you something that, you know the pull package looks cooler obviously with the wide body from the outside there i love the way they integrated it with the wider fenders and stuff it looks so good that combined with you know the better handling the better feeling handling uh obviously again this isn't going to be anyone's choice for an autocross vehicle or a backroads carver usually um unless you do a lot of cruising in which case like i said it'll totally hang but um you know even still you know it's just it's such a good handling vehicle that you know if you love the challengers before but you're like oh, i just wish they handled a little bit better i think that six thousand dollars is well spent i mean sure you can go to the aftermarket and stuff but you're not going to get something that looks this good that's backed by you know oem engineering and warranty and uh know-how and um it's uh, just it's a really great package and it's so awesome that they've now allowed it to trickle down here to the scat pack and then you have this great engine which just makes power at all rpms and uh, it's good that it makes power at all rpms because you know it's not a, a very uh, you know wide power band redline is right at 6,000 rpms and so it's definitely a low down vehicle you know and so you definitely have to work this gearbox to get it to move um, but you also have to work it a lot to upshift very frequently because you don't have a lot of uh, you know rpms to go before you got to immediately go into the next gear um and so i still love the manual i still think i i would pick the manual if i were to buy a uh, challenger myself but i certainly don't blame anyone for getting the automatic because it's really close like it's as much as i'm a diehard manual guy and i've owned manual cars um for every vehicle that i've owned even still the automatic in these is so good i would be severely tempted to get the automatic because it is just phenomenal uh, but this manual is great a couple other things I mentioned here about the manual though too is um, that the clutch has a pretty good throw to it 
but it is a little bit on the weightier side. So uh, if you're sitting in traffic for a lot of time, obviously the automatic would probably be the better choice for you anyway, um, but it is something that's not gonna be super enjoyable. It is a little bit more of a leg workout than uh, the competing vehicles as far as you know the clutch heaviness and stuff, but not a deal breaker by any means, not a huge deal, but just something worth mentioning. But uh, you know, even at lower speeds here, it's just amazing just how flat the handling is. It's just so effortless here in the wide bodies. It doesn't have any of the drama that you really had with uh, the narrow body challengers, and so that's a good thing or a bad thing depending on your viewpoint. Uh, I personally love the tail happy antics and uh, a little bit more of being on the edge. I think especially for a street car, I think it's nice to have that little bit of drama so that you don't have to be driving insanely fast and at some super high limits in order to get the vehicle to step out and feel like you're at the limit whereas with this the limits are so much higher because these wider tires you get rid of that drama and so some people prefer that some people just want a grip monster they don't want wheel spin they don't want any of that uh, sketchiness I guess for lack of a better word um, that you get with those others and so again it just comes down to personal preference and um, so overall yeah I can't find a bad thing to say about the scat pack I mean yes it's heavy um, and that's one of those things you're not going to be able to get around until the fully next-gen version, which is still several years off. Um, so in the meantime, I love how they've maximized this platform and really um, wrung the most out of it here. And uh, it's 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 so impressive how well the Challenger is doing sales-wise, but also how it's keeping up with some of its newer competition that's fresher on uh, newer platforms. Uh, and this is still doing so well for itself. And I can totally see the appeal of the Challengers. And I absolutely love them. Um, um, and uh, it would be one of the vehicles if I didn't own the car that I currently own and I didn't love it so much I would certainly I think uh, be going for one of these challenges. I love them that much They are phenomenal and a pretty good value too You know you can get a lot of discounts these days on them as well But even as they are at MSRP, I think it's still very competitive again with the other offerings out there uh, And so yeah, just a phenomenal package here And I'm so thankful that Dodge has you know continue to push the envelope every year instead of just you know Know, resting on their laurels and uh, continuing on with the same old stuff which is great I mean no one's complaining about Hellcats and stuff um, but to continue to add new stuff to the portfolio that they have here for the Challenger is really really great and um, so anyway yeah it's a fantastic vehicle huge thanks once again to Dodge for providing me with this Scat Pack wide body to review for you guys today let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time take care